the figure again. Hey, what the hell's coming out of his butt? Oh. Hey, what's up, you guys? Jordan Miss Prime here doing another Transformers figure review on the Transformers 4 Age of Extinction Voyager class Galvatron. If you're trying to pick up your Transformers figures, you can't find them at retail. You can give it a big, 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 big. Get your big, badass toys at bigbadtoystore.com. Click the link in the description below. So this Voyager class figure doesn't have anything new with the packaging except for this cool picture of Galvatron and I guess the Galvatron figure right inside there. Pretty cool looking picture. I like this. Not looking too bad. Very, very shiny, menacing looking Galvatron. Here's the side of it. Transformers Generations Voyager class. Series M4 number 004. Transformers on the side right over there. We see him in his robot mode and his vehicle mode over there. There's Bulkhead, I mean uh, Hound. I reviewed that already. And here's a bio on Galvatron. If you want to go ahead and read that, pause it now. There's a side of the packaging. Not much going on. There's a top. Not much going on. Here's a bottom. And whoa, there's a lot going on. Anyway, let's get to it and crack this thing open. So here's Galvatron out of the packaging. And I gotta say, I'm not a huge fan of this figure, especially after doing the Hound Voyager class figure yesterday. This being a Voyager class Galvatron. Uh, just not as cool as that Hound figure, just in comparison. This is mostly a shell former. As you can see, this little backpack over here uh, contains most of the figure. And I guess they didn't really have a whole lot to work with because he's not really a transformer. You know what I mean? He turns into all the little cubes and then just reforms. I, I really hate that. But yeah, the paint applications and everything and the sculpting of the figure actually don't really bother me so much as I thought it would. This flat gray plastic in person isn't really as bothersome or boring as I thought it would be. So anyway, let's take a closer look at his weapon over here and then we'll take a closer look at Galvatron. He does come with a nifty instruction booklet showing you how to transform him from robot mode into truck mode, which is nice because the figure does arrive in robot mode. And here's his blaster, which doesn't look too bad. It has a lot of nice sculpted detail in here. Look at all them tubes. Yeah, a lot of tubes and dots and stuff. He has two different handles. You can see this tab is for his truck mode. This one right here is for his robot mode for him to hold it. This kind of reminds me of G1 Galvatron a little bit. This whole section right over here, I guess, kind of, not really. Could be anything that has a hole, I guess. Anyway, he has his trigger button right there. Oh, and by the way, I really do like that. This is made like with a really metallic navy blue plastic. I think this looks pretty cool. Anyway, you could fire this and pew. And Galvatron holds this weapon quite nicely in either hand, so you just throw it in right there, or do the same thing to the other side. I guess taking it out, yeah, then taking it out isn't as easy, and then yeah put it right in there if it's in nicely. So I do have a few complaints about this figure and one of them is that I wish they had painted his face silver. I think that would have been cool to get some kind of definition. As you can see I'm heavily lighting just the left side over here and the right side is kind of dark so you could see the features that were sculpted in his face because if I just have him like that it kind of just gets whited out and just all blends in together. So you could see the definition right there. So nice sculpting work though. I think they did a good job with that. I really like the blue paint applications right here at the crest of his head. That looks pretty cool. He has even some gold around his it looks like there's supposed to be some light piping there, but there is not as you look at the top of the head. Yeah, no light piping. But the sculpted detail in the head is pretty good though. You know, I have to admire that. Even in the back of the head it looks pretty good. You can see some of those navy blue cables and stuff like that. And there's this arc reactor. Well, it's not an arc reactor, I know that. Decepticon logo. I like how the tubes look. I'm really impressed with the sculpting of this figure over anything else. I really do like the sculpting of it. Even the shoulder pads look pretty nice. You know, they're all shingled apart and everything. A lot of nice sculpted lines in here and tubes. I like the tubes and the sculpted lines. Very, very nice. And right here, again with this navy blue paint, looks great. And coming down the legs, his legs look pretty badass. Yeah, really great ankle articulation over here. I'll get into the articulation in a little bit. I want to mention when you first get this figure, the heel spurs are tucked in, so tuck them out as soon as you get it out of package. And then here's the back. You get some tires over there, and then there's this giant shell formery backpack. You know, it doesn't really look too impressive now, but it'll look cooler after we get through the transformation. Before we get into the articulation, I do want to mention that the figure does feel kind of flat. Uh, especially like this robot mode. I guess when you lift the arms up, I don't know. Just feels like a flat figure. Anyway, he has some pretty decent head articulation. His head moves side to side, kind of swings up when you turn it side to side. You can move his head upward without this transformation bit moving, so you can do that. Can look down a little bit. Plus, if you want to look even more, do the transformation. You look all the way up like that, which is kind of neat. And yeah, even extra down. Anyway, he has these flaps or these uh, shoulder pads that can move up and down right here, so you can allow the shoulders to move like that. Move them forward, bicep swivel, double joint elbow and that's mostly due to the transformation but you can bend his elbow all the way in no wrist articulation no waist articulation really wish he had a waist articulation uh, his hips move out that much he can kick forward quite a bit he has a thigh swivel right over here this part really bothers me a lot is this knee articulation what is that I 
Jeez, I wish it was closer to like right here and it barely bends, so that's pretty lame. But then they make up for it with this awesome ankle articulation where it could bend forward and back down here, and then you can also get a beautiful ankle pivot out of it as well. I mean, that's a great ankle pivot, so yeah, I guess they kind of make up for it with the ankle articulation, but still, what the hell, man. So for a Voyager class figure, Galvatron stands just over seven inches tall. Now here's Galvatron compared to Voyager class Hound, and I do like that Galvatron is taller than Hound. That works out pretty well, even though I think he should be even larger, but still, it's okay. I'm glad they made him taller than Hound, at least. And here he is next to Evasion Mode Optimus Prime, another Voyager class figure. Here he is standing next to the retail version of Leader Class Prime. I guess a Leader Class Galvatron would have been pretty cool, by the way. Here he is next to a Deluxe Class High Octane Bumblebee. And here's Galvatron compared to my custom painted Transformers 1 Voyager Class Megatron. So they stand at about the same height. I wish I had the Dark of the Moon Truck Mode Megatron just for a comparison, but, you know, I don't really regret buying that figure because Megatron turning into a truck kind of pissed me off. And of course here he is next to the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. Now Galvatron's transformation is pretty stupid simple. Will you take us away Bumblebee? Good job Bumblebee. So first off you want to remove his weapon so get this out of here. Again yeah you really have to shimmy that out of the way. And then what you want to do first off is you want to lift up this piece over here and you're going to basically create the shell for him to crawl into. Alright so get these guys out of the way. And get that done. There we go. And then what you want to do is it has two hinges which it's connected to. So you want to move that all the way back both times. Hinge there, hinge there. You want to scoot his head all the way back in. And then you want to fold his arms all the way up so that they're crunching. And then you're going to tuck that in. Then do the same thing with this elbow and arm. And tuck that right in. And you can have these shoulder pads overlap. It's okay. And then you want to pull this thing out right there. And lift this and just pull this down and then pull the wheels down and that's all going to connect and then what you want to do is you want to get the wheels facing outward so spin that outward and spin that outward put the heel spurs in and then fold the feet in all the way and then connect this in the back so you can see how it's like teeth it just connects i don't know why i have to do that but yeah, there we go all right and then you're going to take these little flaps and scoot them all the way forward without detaching this part so i guess maybe you want to do this first because this has a tab all the way over here so yeah there it goes and yeah there it goes and then we'll put the teeth back together right over there Come on. There it is. All right. So yeah, you know, like I said, pretty simple, you know, even though I managed to take a little longer doing it than I think I should have. So I can't say this is a very bad truck mode. I kind of like this truck mode. I mean, it rolls very well. Look at that. Let me roll out. Yeah. So yeah, I really like how it rolls. It's a pretty cool looking truck too. It doesn't really look too bad, you know? Just taking a quick gander at it over here. It looks pretty nice. You do get this gap right there, but not really a big deal. Now, he does have some weapon storage, so as I mentioned earlier, you could plug that in right there. Or you could have it facing backwards, I guess. I don't know. You could probably just sit it right up there like that. What I like doing, though, is having it sit uh, right in here like that. I think that looks a little cooler. You know, there's no real place for it to latch onto or anything, but to me, it just looks a little bit more appropriate that he'd be firing from behind him while he's driving away or something like that. I don't know. So this whole shell compartment over here has this nice bluish gray colored plastic, and you can see the marbleization right there in the plastic, which some people have told me is due to it being cheap plastic, but uh, it doesn't really bother me. I can't say it bothers me that much. I always like texturing and things like that in nature instead of it just being flat and boring. So yeah, that doesn't look too bad to me. I think it looks all right. There's a lot of color variations and paint applications on this guy too, which I think is pretty cool. Like they painted some blue and we have this nice glossy black paint. We have black windshields, which doesn't look too bad. And you know, some more glossy black paint right here for the grill. Some nice silver. So I think the figure actually looks pretty cool and I like the sculpting of it too. You have all these bolts coming down the side right over there. Looks pretty nice, man. And I wish, again, silver painted for the hubcaps. I would have appreciated that. But, you know, not a huge deal. Just looking at the tires. And the back is just transformer. It's not looking like it has taillights or anything like that. And overall, this is pretty cool looking. I can't say it's a bad looking truck mode. You do get a little bit of gappage right there. But it's not a big deal at all. And to get a measurement on Galvatron, he's uh, just over six inches across. So here's Galvatron compared to Voyager class Hound, and you can see the size difference over there. He looks a lot bigger, but a lot more empty space around here, lengthwise. There we go. Again, these guns just popping off very easily. 
But yeah, there's your size comparison. And here's Galvatron compared to Evasion Mode Optimus Prime. Two Voyager class figures again over here. And Galvatron looking much larger than Prime, even though I do like this Prime a bit more. And here he is next to Leader Class Prime. Much smaller than Leader Class Prime for sure, as he should be, this being a Voyager class figure and this being a Leader Class figure. But I don't know. Uh, part of me wants to really believe that they're in scale together. I don't know. They look in scale together to you? I want to believe they are. So that's my review, guys. It's a pretty decent figure. Not terrible by any means, but definitely not great at all. But I think it's cool, and I'm happy to add him to my movie collection. I think it's a pretty cool figure overall. I dig it. Anyway, I hope you guys liked my video. Please hit the like button if you did. Go to tformers.com. Leave a comment over there. Video should be posted there soon. Leave a comment here in the description, and do not forget to subscribe. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.